Hi, I'm Alex Paul, the Editor-in-Chief of Electronic Component News. Recently in the news there's been a lot of talk and also in the marketplace about uh, the next generation of flat screen televisions, the LED TVs as they've been called. The issue is, is that they're not really LED TVs, they're LCD TVs, liquid crystal display televisions. But the issue is, is that they no longer use the old way of creating the light that drives them, they're using now LED light. A standard LCD is a light valve, basically. The pixels and the color filters and the me mechanism for actually creating the image simply filter the light that's pr been provided by the backlight and that is coming through the image towards you. In the case of an LCD, uh, previous generations, that light came from a serpentine fluorescent tube that was behind the screen. In a uh, LED TV, it's still the same LCD. Might have a little bit more advanced driver technology as far as the pixel generation or something like that. But the light itself, instead of coming from a fluorescent lamp, comes from red, green, and blue are LEDs or white LEDs behind the screen. In the case of red, green, and blue LEDs, you actually get a higher color gamut than you can get with the original NTSC color spec. That's because the chromaticity chart, as you know, is red, green, and blue, and the more pure light sources that you use to filter with the LCD to create the image, the more colorful that image will be. Fluorescent light is actually very poor in color reproduction because there are few, there's few of, less of the color spectrum in it. So LEDs, because they're, if in the case of RGBs, closer to the pure source of light, or in the case of white LEDs, a better balance of white light, an LED-driven television will actually give you better color than an LCD that uses fluorescent lamps. And it's not just LCDs that make the image. Uh, plasma screens we're all familiar with. Uh, the, big the big disadvantage of a plasma screen is that it takes a tremendous amount of power. A 50-inch uh, plasma screen would run upwards of 600 watts of power, whereas a comparative LED-driven LCD would probably go less than half of that or about half of that power. There are, in addition to the plasma and LCD, which are the traditional flat screens we know of, there are other display technologies out there, some consumer and some professional that you may not know about. This technology is a vacuum fluorescent display. This technology is used very often in uh, medical apparatus or very critical equipment applications where the display has to be very bright, last a long time, and be highly visible. This is literally a glass envelope vacuum tube with the image elements in it. This is a Noritake display. They're uh, a, pretty much one of the leaders in uh, vacuum fluorescent technology. But even with advanced OLED and with advanced LCD technologies, basic high brightness, high contrast, rugged display technologies like vacuum fluorescent and even CRT will still find niches within the industrial and professional space because performance is still important in critical applications. As far as consumer televisions go, there's the rear projections still. In the case of uh, most rear projection, the old school rear projections were cathode ray tube guns, so the picture quality wasn't that great. The modern rear projection television is an HD screen, at least 720, almost always 1080. Uh, using currently the big chip is the DLP chip, the digital light processing chip from Texas Instruments. If you note, this looks like a little mirror. Actually, it's millions of little mirrors, and the each pixel of the mirror is an active tiny mirror. So, if you could see this while operating, there would be actually a reflection of the frame at the time that you wanted to display. You shine a light through a color filter, off of this, through a lens, and you have a display. More modern versions of this also use LEDs because the same for the same reasons. You get a better spectrum of light, or in the case of a color display, you can strobe red, green, and blue LEDs and eliminate the moving color wheel. There's another reflective technology out there that unfortunately didn't do very well, and that's liquid crystal and silicon. 
This is a liquid crystalline silicon display from Philips. The uh, technology is radically different. This is a reflective liquid crystal, and this is a reflective micro mirror technology. But the concept is the same. This is a reflection of the actual, or I should say, this creates a reflection of the actual uh, display, and light bouncing off of it becomes the image. Uh, the big problem with liquid crystal and silicon that DLP doesn't have is the micromirror in a DLP actually goes through a range of motion, so the light coming into the DLP is more easily modulated by the lamp. In the case of the, I mean the uh, DLP, in the case of a liquid crystal reflector, there is no range of motion. The pixels are either reflective or non-reflective, which means that the alignment of this within the optical system is so critical, any misalignment causes artifacts and images because there is no range of motion. There is no area that you can trap the light within a fraction of a degree. If this is off by any, you have aberrations, you have image issues, and frankly, that's the primary reason, in my humble opinion, that uh, liquid crystalline silicon didn't take over because although it is a cheap, relatively, reflective technology, the optical engine details were a little bit uh, daunting for the average manufacturer. Uh, even Intel, let me reach up here, this is a very rare thing. This is a promotional piece on Intel's liquid crystal on silicon technology. A lot of people don't even know that Intel had a foray into the liquid crystal on technology space, but um, they had similar issues to the other developers of liquid crystalline silicon technology. And at the present time, the only actual reflective display technology, and ironically, the only high definition display technology manufactured in the United States is the Texas Instrument product. One last uh, point I wanted to make the uh, e ink electronic paper technology has been compared very often to liquid crystal, especially in the areas of handheld devices, portables. Uh, e-books and next generation data devices. The primary advantage of an electronic paper display is it's bi-stable. That means it doesn't use any power while a static image is being displayed. So no matter how advanced that hand reader is, if it's based on LCD technology, when it's showing a static image it theoretically uses an infinite amount more power than an electronic paper display because the electronic paper display uses no power at all while displaying a static image. This liquid paper display came out of the uh, famous Esquire e-paper cover and I just simply pulled it out of its power supply and it is static with the image of the uh, cover and it's been this way since the issue came out which was almost a year ago and uh, this display will stay this way for another several years without any change and without any use of power. So that e-book as long as you're reading that page, it doesn't use any power, which is the primary advantage of using electronic paper in a book because you don't need video, and as long as you're looking at that page to read it, your ebook is not using any power. So until uh, LCD develops a uh, competitive, bi-stable technology, well, actually, there is one, the uh, Calisteric LCD technology out of Kent, but as far as uh, price goes and performance goes, uh, electronic paper is still the cheapest and uh, most versatile power uh, by stable technology out there, although there's some promising stuff coming out of Kent, as I said, in the Calisteric LCD space, and ironically, uh, companies like Bridgestone, because of their uh, rubber particle technology, they've actually created this technology very similar to uh, electronic paper. So whether you're talking about uh, older technologies that are still relevant, like vacuum fluorescent, or current technologies that are just appropriate for uh, niche spaces, rear projection is considered a relatively niche space, and of course the entire gamut of front projection machines from business projectors to household projectors dominated by uh, DLP technology, and of course the uh, technologies that could have been but never seem to make it, like liquid crystal on silicon. OLED is in that park right now as a niche technology, uh, but in my humble opinion, OLED is going to dominate everything in the 5 inches, 6 inches, and below because the aging issues on OLED uh, phosphors and the whole uh, issue of age on the device, degradation of phosphors, and packaging and, uh, issues with uh, making sure that OLEDs are airtight and impervious to moisture, which is what destroys them. 
Uh, OLEDs will be a very good technology for portable devices, but will not really be a big challenger for television, as evidenced by Sony's uh, pulling out of their uh, OLED television. But the uh, Nexus One smartphone's got an OLED in it. So, uh, so far, my prediction on small displays being a dominant area for OLEDs is hold, held up. Let's see how far that goes. But thanks again. Let me, talking about, let me talk about uh, display technology. And if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, send them to me. Um, my email is uh, alex.palt at uh, advantagemedia.com, and the website is uh, ecnmag.com. Thanks very much for giving me your time.